out just a couple of days ago with injury. No, on Elliot, Elliot Giles, remember, 333 performer, ran the 800 earlier on. So 15 athletes. That's a big field, unusually big field for a championship. I can't remember the last time I saw more than 12 in a championship 1500 meter final. And you can see it there, heavy traffic as you go through the first 100 meters. Nobody really wanting to lead, but nobody wanting to be in the middle or at the back of the pack. So a lot of jostling for position at the front there in the top four or five places. And it's uh, Mills, I think, or no, Matt Stonia, who uh, has the front. Or is it? No, it is Davis, excuse me, there's so many white vests there, it's uh, like one of those commercial races, will the shoe company vest be exactly the same? But it is Davis for Phoenix now, and West, James West on his shoulder, the Tunbridge man. Jake Whiteman boxed at the moment just behind the leader in fourth place. And uh, pace has slowed significantly after that rush in the first hundred, Hannah. Uh, this is what we saw in the heat yesterday. We saw Archie Davis leading from the front and he was comfortable doing that. Um, I might expect Tom Mortimer made that move around the outside but didn't go all the way to the front. 63 is really slow for these guys. This is well within the capability. You can see Jake Hayward making a move around the outside. We talked about this yesterday in the heats. People make moves and are they trying to get to the front or are they just trying to reposition? And for me, it's too early to be repositioning. You can see there that apologies i can't make out who that is it's made a, a move to the front there already james young james i think young. of morpeth but uh, yeah josh kerr boxed badly at the moment on the inside but look at this five across they come into the straight after 600 meters it is painfully slow athletes like uh, jake whiteman with that fabulous 800 meter speed should be confident in this sort of situation josh kerr josh kerr has enormous strength. I don't know if he's got the speed to match the likes of Whiteman as they go through two laps to run, but it's going to be an even slower second lap. 63-4. You've got athletes out there right out in lane three. That's a Copeland, I think. Piers Copeland of Wimborne running very, very wide there. It doesn't really matter at this pace if you run three or four metres further because it is so slow. But look at that 800 time. 205.46. Slightly quicker second lap for what it's worth. Josh Kerr pushing his way through on the inside. I was going to say Archie Davis is running a good race on the inside, but I was noticing he was drifting wide a little bit, and I was wondering when Josh Kerr might try and get around the inside of Archie Davis. He's done that. But Josh Kerr is in a lot of traffic there, and you look at these guys with Olympic qualifying marks. You've got Jake Hayward at the front there, Charlie deval Grice on his shoulder, and Pierce Copeland. He's run wide the whole race, but it is slow, so potentially not so important that he's running wide, and more important that he's within striking distance at the front. Five men in this field at the Olympic qualifying. The first two will book their spots for Tokyo. Big names are going to miss out here as they come to the belt. Charlie Grice has been well positioned throughout. It is the Cardiff man, Jake Hayward, who leads as they go into the final lap. Gaps will begin to open now. Josh Kerr's had problems throughout the entire race looking for a good position. Now he finds himself better positioned in fourth place. Whiteman nicely positioned there in third place, tailing the uh, two leaders. They go through 1,200 metres in 302, a 57 0 1. A penultimate lap there as they go down the back straight and a big push from Kerr. Whiteman slots into his slipstream. Charlie Deval Grice is there, so is Hayward. Copeland nowhere at the moment, he's back in sixth place as Kerr kicks around the final bend. Whiteman in his slipstream. Hayward losing ground on the Deval Grice has got to push past the Cardiff man who wants to get into the top three. And Kerr will need another kick now because here comes Whiteman. The announcer in the stadium is the father of this man and he busts a gut to try and get past her. Josh Kerr, a battle between these two, it's a great battle too. And Jake Whiteman finishes in second yet again. Last year's second in the 800, Josh Kerr takes the win. That final lap, very fast indeed. We'll get that split for you as quickly as we can, but Josh Kerr timed it right. 340.75. Not a bad time considering the early race splits. 205.4, remember, at 800 meters. Josh Kerr will go to the Olympics. He is the world number two. Jake Whiteman will as well with that second spot, though he would love to have been able to call himself British champion. And the battle behind them, well, the selectors have got some thinking to do now. Josh Kerr made a big move down that back straight. Jake Whiteman, I, th I feel like he deliberately let everybody make their kick and then saved a bit for this home straight, but he couldn't quite get past Josh Kerr. Josh Kerr's 331 victory a few weeks ago and miles ahead of the rest of the field was so impressive. And Jake Whiteman will have to wait another year for a British title. How many medals can he pick up at the British Championships without winning? But he has secured that Olympic qualification. I think 
Jake Hayward held on for that third place, Archie Davis and Charlie Deval Grice in fifth. So Archie Davis outperforming his ranking coming in. You can see what that victory meant to Josh Kerr there. I thought they played into Jake Whiteman's hands, but all credit to the Edinburgh man.